What's up guys? Today I wanted to talk about structuring your workout routine to cater to whatever you have going on in your life or your physique. So when you're trying to structure your routine, especially for bodybuilding, you obviously want to make it so you're hitting each muscle group at least once a week. This would be typically called a bro split where muscles are split apart over five to six days and it's making sure you hit each muscle group pretty individualistically once per week and then do it again the following week. Now, there are wig there's wiggle room with this too. You can always double up on things. For example, if you feel like you might need additional work on your back that you're not able to squeeze the most effort out of on a one given back day, what you could do is find another day of the week, like let's say you have a day solely meant for shoulders. You can then add additional back work on that day. You could make it the same lifts you've done on the previous back day. I kind of want to lean towards doing a little bit more variety. So let's say if you did a back day where you're mostly rowing by you know pulling weight to yourself, you could have a shoulder and back day later in the week where you're, you're hitting your shoulders and now you're doing more pull down type movements for your back. Now, with that specific example, it would kind of make more sense to do it how I described because the two days out of any workout plan that are going to be the most fatiguing on your body are going to be leg day and back day. The amount of stress you're putting on your body to maintain the form for you to hit things like barbell rows is very high. Leg day would be a bit higher, but it's very systemically fatiguing. So you could do it that way. Another thing when you're trying to actually structure the individual lifts in your in your program, you know, a lot of people are of the mindset, like I just, remember how I just said uh, about variety? Well, some people do a bit too much of it and they're kind of just doing a lot of different things for the sake of doing a lot of different things because they believe that's what needs to be done. Now, the problem with this is, let's say you're doing a bicep day and you're doing like four or five different exercises to hit your biceps. Well, what if on one of those exercises, like let's say you do cable curls, for example, I connect very well with those, you feel your biceps perfectly the whole time. You feel these really hard contractions and you're maintaining this perfect stretch tension as you go through the reps. It's just, you're, you're hitting everything you possibly could doing that exercise, right? Well, now, what if you did three sets of that and now you decide, well, I gotta have variety, let me do preacher curls. And you get on a machine or whatever, you free weights maybe, and you're doing preacher curls, but you're not really feeling jack shit doing those. You're just doing them because you think that's what you have to do. Maybe you do hammer curls and you don't feel anything in your bicep when you're doing them. That's kind of counterproductive, but there, there's nothing stopping you from doing more sets of the one exercise you feel great doing other than you getting in your own head about it. You're gonna get more progress out of the things you feel the most within your muscle cells, I'm sorry, your muscle tissue. So there's no need to do unnecessary variety just because you believe you have to. Now when you're structuring the order of the lifts, um, that can be, that's very progress dependent. Like let's say your, your quads, uh, you seem to, when you do leg presses or squats, you don't ever feel like you're getting your, your quads targeted so much as your hamstrings and your glutes. Well, something you could do is before even doing any of those big leg movements, you could do a, a bunch of sets of leg extensions, which is singling out the quad and you're pre-exhausting it. Now, some people will say, well, that's just going to make the other muscles uh, be more likely to uh, compensate more so. Well, you're pre-fatiguing your quads, so those are the limiting factor, meaning when you're doing those big lifts afterwards, the, the thing that's going to prevent you from doing the lift is your quads being fatigued. Therefore, they're going to be taking a, a much more brunt of the, the workload because without uh, the engagement from them, you're not gonna be able to do the lift. So that's a, one way you can do it. I'll give an example for myself. So as you can see, I drive a truck all day. Now, I'm in this thing for a lot of hours. Um, when I do a leg day, part of what I do in my routine is I do uh, Romanian deadlifts, which is, uh, it's targeting uh, mainly my, my hamstrings and my glutes. But because I sit in this truck all day, 
my lower back is very tight and it makes me very prone to getting very nasty lower back pumps where they're so bad it's affecting the rest of my workout. The lower back pumps can be so bad I'll have to lay on the floor or it, it's pulsating so much I'm actually losing uh, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting I'm cooling down and not staying warmed up in the muscles I'm trying to hit but my lower back is just full of so much blood because my back is so tight throughout the day now there's no amount of stretching that I have time for to alleviate that issue because 15 or 20 minutes of stretching is not going to do the job when I'm sitting in a truck for eight nine hours so what I do is I take those Romanian deadlifts and I put them at the very last lift of the entire day so that I hit everything I need to to the best of my ability and now I'm able to hit those Romanian deadlifts maybe with a bit less weight but I'm also able to hit those with the best of my ability because I don't have to worry about doing other shit afterward. There's no apprehension for me letting loose doing those Romanian deadlifts because it's the very last thing I have to do. So lifestyle could be very important when you're deciding how you want to organize the lifts you do in a routine. Now there, there's no reason why you need to do barbell bench press as the first lift of your chest day other than you want to try and seem cool to everyone and bench as much weight as possible. So you could do chest flies or something where you feel that your chest is getting very engaged and then move to the pressing movement where now you've kind of you've kind of pre-programmed you getting the most squeeze out of those contractions opposed to you trying to find the tension doing the press that you may or may not feel the most engagement in your chest while doing. A typical problem with people is they'll bench press a lot and their shoulders get really pumped up and they're pumped up way more than their chest is by comparison. This would be counterproductive for obvious reasons. You're when you're doing a chest movement, your chest is the primary thing that should be filled with the most blood, not surrounding muscle groups. So you can keep those things in mind when you're trying to structure, you know, how you want to organize it, uh, how, you, how many days a week you want to do. Now, I personally, I do six days a week because that's what my coach wants me to do. I'm growing just fine off of it. But I will say, in the entire 16 years that I've been lifting, uh, when I work out five days a week, I feel completely fine. When I work out six days a week, I start pushing into the territory where I accrue more, uh, more nagging injuries than I would with the five days. So that could be a downside of it, and it, you have to be a lot more cognizant of what you're doing day to day when you're doing six days a week. You can't just go balls to the walls, ripping shit off the floor every day when you're working out six days a week because you will hurt yourself. Maybe not in a catastrophic way, but you're going to have a nagging injury that's now preventing you from lifting to the best of your ability. So you could decide to do five days a week. You could decide to do six. It kind of depends. Maybe you hit every muscle group within those five days, but you want to have a six day so you could uh, revisit a muscle group that you feel needs additional work. Alternatively, you could do the five days a week and you could just double up on some things. Like let's say you do uh, a common one for people is I'm going to do back and biceps Monday. I'm going to do legs on Tuesday. I'm going to do shoulders and chest on Wednesday. I'm going to do arms on Thursday. I'm going to uh, do, I don't know, uh, glutes and chest on Friday. You could you could organize a five-day routine in that kind of manner. There's no problem with that. Uh, you just don't want to have carryover between muscle groups. So, like, if you're doing back and biceps, you're still fatiguing your arms to the point where now you're not able to get the most effort you could out of doing the direct bicep work at the end. And it could cause that muscle group to lag behind the back because your back is taking all the work while your body's fresh. So, it, it would be something to be very cognizant of, and it really depends on do you feel like your arms are something that need more development compared to your back, which in my case they do, so it would not be wise for me to do back and biceps together. Another person might have great arms, but their torso is lagging, so they will have every incentive in the world to want to do back and biceps, so they can get the most work out of that back, and then kind of put the biceps a bit on the back burner towards the end because it doesn't need as much effort um, in the given day. So these are ways you can organize it and kind of help yourself out instead of shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to uh, organizing your workout routine, lifts, and how you want to do them. Hope that helps. Let me know what you think. How do you do your routine?